Hello everyone, I'm Said. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the aspects of async await pattern that maybe most of developers don't know about it, but it will impact on your application performance. Before going to the code, I'm going to show you one scenario for calling async await pattern. Imagine that we have one sample application. We have several layers in the application, for example, service layer, repository, and at the end, you're going to call the database for executing your query. So usually it's like that. Uh, we have one execute async method. It will call the service method async, and then again, going through the repository layer and at the end database, right? Maybe before and after your async await, you have a bunch of code to run, to check the code, the result, whatever, right? The point here is when you're putting await keyword before the method, it will go through the all this method, all this layer before the last step. What it means here, it means the async method is running synchronously, not asynchronously. You got the point, I think. It means if you have some bunch of code like before calling the service method or repository method, you are doing something like processing data, computing some calculation or something like that. It will all run synchronously, not async. Okay, the async method will go through all of this layer and will be stopped at this last step for executing your query. And then it will return control to the main thread. Your main thread can do whatever you want. For example, in case of API, your web API can serve another request. And then this task will wait until the database query is executed. And after it will return the response recursively to your upper layer, right? I hope this image told you what I mean, but I think with checking the code, you will get main issue here. Imagine that we have one simple API that it's just endpoint here, hello world, but we have one background service. I have another video about what is the difference between iHosted service implementation and background service implementation. You can check that video before because it will help you to see what is the exact difference. But in short, background service will not stop your host to execute. Actually, host service will be executed one by one. After that, your Kestrel server will be run, right? So here, our background service, we have usually the execute async, just like that image I already showed you. We have one service method async, and then here is the repository just for, you know, simulate a real scenario for this code. And then we have one database call, which takes around 30 seconds, which is obviously a very bad query, right? Let's start the application and let's see what is going on. If I run application.net run, building the application, you can see the background job is starting. Also, immediately our Kestrel is starting as well. If I call our API, it's working before even the job is not done yet, right? So that 30 seconds is done. It will log that stopping logs that we put after the methods. So here it's executing upper layer. For example, here is the database call, which was the last one here. And then database call is a stopping repository service. And at the end is background job, right? It means our service is running like that. First of all, the async will go through the background job and then after go through the service repository, all sync, not async. You may think that once we put this await before calling this method is done. Control will return to your main thread, but it's not true until it reaching to the last one that is waiting, for example, for IO operation, database call, third party API calling, it is still going through your layers. And then after it's done, first is database call stopping and then repository service layer and so on. Okay, 
What is the issue here? What I want to tell you here? For example, here, before going to the last step, actually, maybe you want to do something sin that is blocking the thread. Let me write a method here. For example, I want to have a void method, call it do something. It's just starting and stopping just for simulation for waiting for a while that you're doing something async i'm going to create a token here that will be for example a stop after 30 seconds and just simply we can say and yeah we don't want to do anything also we just want to put it here as a stopping it means this synchronous method will take 30 seconds to finish and then it will just lock something and done. What happened if I call this method in our do something, right? Imagine that we have something. I mean, you're doing some extra operation or calling some third party API, but those operations are sync, not async just like this one. We have several layer here. We are calling service and all we are putting the await behind it. And then here before the last step, we are just by mistake or whatever. Usually we think that because we have this await here, it should not block the main thread, but let's see. I'm going to run the application again What's the point of using the background service? As I told you, background service will not block the main thread. So it should allow Kestrel to run just what we saw before the API was working and everything was good, right? So if I say .NET run, as you can see, it will just starting, starting, doing something, starting, right? And here our API, if I call it, it's stuck in here because that main thread is not freed. If I waiting for 30 seconds to be done and right after, imagine that. Uh, okay, so here the uh, orchestral now is running before calling that task.delay 30 seconds. So our doing something is starting and now is stopped. And right after that, it allows our Kestrel to run. It means it already freed our main thread. And as you can see, after database is done, repository service and background is done. So now the question is how we can fix this issue. There is two approach for solving this issue in the async await pattern. Here, as we saw that we are calling this do something in sync because there is no task returning by something. One of the simplest things that maybe you used it before is using task.run. For example, we can say task.run here and then something like this one right actually it should be like that and then we can put await here what it does here the task that run actually it will run your sync method in an async way so that it will not block our main thread let's run the application again it should not wait for the do something and then immediately your kestrel web server should be run okay let's clear this console and then .NET run. As you can see, our Kestrel web server is already running without waiting for that do something to be run and then running the Kestrel, right? And as we can see here, do something is starting and then right after the Kestrel is running and here our sync method is done, okay? So that's one of the approaches that we can use the task.run to not freezing the main thread. But another feature that we can use, which is I think maybe most of developers don't know about it. I always thought that, okay, what this feature in .NET will be used. That feature is task.yield. I don't know, you already used it before, 
but this task.yield is exactly came for such these purposes. So as you can see, creates a description of the yield method, creates an awaitable task that asynchronously yield back the control to your main thread. It means if you are using such a this uh, scenario, the sync method, calling a sync method inside an async method, you can use the task.yield to not waiting for the actual task and wasting your resources or freezing your main thread. When your program coming here at this point, it immediately return the control to your upper layers. So let's see. So if I run the application here, as we can see, all of the services run immediately without waiting for that sync method. And then here we can see the web Kestrel is running and also that do something. The first log in the code is running as well, but without any blocking the application. The point here is you need to be careful about asynchronous. When we say using asynchronous pattern, it means all of your pattern, all of your methods needs to be run asynchronously, right? It means all of the layer, all of the extra methods, I don't know, the IO operation, you have to use the async. Otherwise, you cannot use the benefits of the async await pattern in the .NET. I hope I could show you the main issue for the await. Thank you very much for your time. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and waiting for more videos. Thank you. Bye.